it's nice. Our poets who weren't at that meeting but still had a chance to view <coughs> the pictures on, online. So a welcome to Metro Man Poets and a welcome to our visitors and our guests. And of course, welcome to the artists. I will just ask Sue Graham, who is in charge of this, she would step forward and say a few words. Hello. Um, this is my painting that was untitled. Um, I call it Lost uh, or Forgotten Path Pathway, and um, Peter sort of named it Deserted House for reference so that people would know which painting they were looking at, those who weren't at the meeting in January. Um, so this painting was originally a failed painting. There's another painting underneath that had gone wrong repeatedly. I uh, got fed up with it, so um, decided to paint over, and I was at the point of painting over when bits of the original painting remained, but then layered over with other things, and I started to discover other things within it, and it became, I thought, much more interesting. I'm very interested in uh, decay, in what happens when humans are no longer around, um, in nature taking over. Uh, and I've looked into uh, actually pictures of Detroit um, in areas where nature has completely taken over and in the exclusion zone around Chernobyl. So, um, where nature apparently is thriving, apparently the dawn chorus is absolutely deafening there and it's not because of mutation but it's because of lack of humans. So, um, <laughs> that's where I, that's how I came to it. Um, it's a very layered, if you run your finger over it, it's a very, um, there are lots of texture in it. So, uh, and that's how I came to this painting. So, again. Um, Thank you. Um, I wasn't at the meeting when this was presented, so it came to me as a print off, and I hadn't heard either of the titles, either like The Deserted House or um, The Lost uh, Forgotten, Path. Forgotten Pathway. So I came to it completely fresh, um, and the print I made of it came out rather pink. So. Um, that will explain something to me in the first verse. <coughs> so I called it Double Take. She's been at sea too long. The core of gulls, the pull and push of tides have poured. She dreams of home, the house rosy, obscured by mist diffused by early sun. The ancient path still there, worn deep by centuries of pilgrims moving east. The line of silver birches offering sh shade. The boat rocks. She looks again. Along the track, a few yards on, black railings bar her way. Dark paned windows conceal the past. Cow parsley's gone to seed. Ahead and left on a crumbling tower, seven crows wait. When I first saw this, I immediately thought of what was the mayor's The Listeners, which uh, ah. lots of us know from school. <laughs> uh, very strange poem about a, a, a man on horseback who comes to a deserted property and, and sort of knocks on the door, doesn't get any response, and says, "Tell them I, I came," and then and then goes off. And so my poem is called "The Timeless Host," and it's from the point of view of the house rather than the visitor. The timeless host. He has gone at last from our moonlit door with all of his noise and that chomping horse. Alone now, now, we will resume communing with the spreading gorse. We won't relay any of his missives. Our ears do not attend, let alone obey commands. And we do not care much that he came after so many years when all the ones he professed to love so much have left one by one, last of all the blue-eyed girl, their time is long gone. So he's taken away his questions and loud knocking, his inability to let it be, as if to wake up the dead would mask his unwillingness to see that corporeal, he's stuck in the current of time, while we who subsist in the crumbling fabric of this house, where no clocks work, have nothing left to do. We're not glad he's gone, nor sorry. Those are the feelings of his world. With no regrets and nothing to confess, slowly we ease back into timelessness. <laughs> 